Afternoon. How are we all doing? All right. All right, just a quick recap. Um, you know, certainly a uh, great atmosphere uh, at the Swamp. Our guys needed to think about the right things going into that game. I thought that they were confident. Uh, I thought they thought about uh, how to win the game. Um, I thought that, uh, you know, they, they maintained that throughout the game, even though there was some adversity. Um, I thought they, they kept their emotions in check. I think those are really important. I think I talked about those last week. When you go on the road, you have to eliminate distractions and from um, all the things that go on in pregame, during the game. Um, there's a lot of distractions. I thought they did a very good job. I think the sideline was excellent. Uh, guys really being positive with each other during the game. Those all go to, um, you know, getting through the highs and lows of a game uh, when you're on the road and, and the crowds involved in it. So proud of our football team and the way they manage themselves and handle themselves in that situation. And then, you know, off offensively, we executed very well. Uh, defensively, you know, we came up with some stops when we needed them. Um, you know, clearly on the offensive side of the ball, you know, we, we've got to eliminate some mistakes uh, up front. Um, we've got to be cleaner. Um, and I think defensively, it's pretty clear it's the big play, you know, eliminating the big plays. But again, um, you know, execution wise, uh, our best performance offensively. Uh, and, and then we'll look to build on on that in terms of consistency of performance. And then defensively, you know, cleaning up the big plays. I think that's it. And. You know, special teams, you know, I think we'll all see the same thing. You know, first play of the game, um, we let the ball outside the defense. Um, you know, we've got to contain it on a kickoff, and then, you know, we, we muff a punt. So, um, you know, those guys know uh, they have to, you know, obviously be accountable, and, uh, you know, we've got to put them uh, in a position to succeed. Um, we'll keep coaching it, and um, we know we've got to get better there. So, move on to uh, Ole Miss. Obviously, another top 10 team coming into the stadium. Um, and uh, we're excited about the challenge. It's, a, it's an outstanding football team, well coached. Uh, Lane does a great job with, um, obviously, the offense. But overall, uh, a very confident football team. Uh, been playing well, uh, undefeated. Um, it's an offense that is. Um, you know, systematic in its play calling, um, what they're trying to do. Um, the pieces fall together quite nicely um, and very talented. You know, the quarterback, um, you know, is, is a two, true double threat quarterback. Um, Dart can throw it. Um, he can run. Uh, he's complemented with two outstanding backs, um, big receivers, uh, and, and a very uh, – you know, very balanced attack. They can run it equally as well as they throw it. And um, so I have a lot of respect for what they do defensively. They're in, you know, a, a three down defense. Um, you know, we don't see a ton of what they do. Uh, they do what they do well. Um, and, uh, you know, I think they, they get pressures. Uh, I think they're second uh, in the SEC in sacks. So, Difficult sometimes to know where they're coming from. We'll have to do a really good job with protections, scanning, um, and, and taking care of our quarterback. So uh, excited to be at home. I know our guys want to obviously uh, play well at home uh, before um, uh, our home fans. And um, again, look forward to uh, uh, another challenge uh, for an SEC top 10 team. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Hey, Brian, um, uh, yeah. I'm going to start on a lighthearted note. Um, saw you on SEC Network this morning. Uh, could you see Chris Doring? How did you keep a straight face? Uh, through <laughs> I could see him, you... yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just – yeah. Did you know that was coming? I had no idea. No, I, I didn't know that he was going to dress like a clown. Um, but I think if you keep betting, uh, you get what you deserve there um, because I think he's 0 for 4. Um, I, and, you know, in that situation, I, I think Pete should just up the ante, you know, at this point um, and, and make sure that there's uh, no dress uh, to, that he comes out in next time. Um, and 
then, then, then there won't be any more betting. Uh, not every coach probably would have played along. I mean, but you seem like you're someone who's like, hey, look, this is a hard business and you have to make a lot of sacrifices. You can enjoy yourself once in a while. I mean, is that kind of the attitude you, you like to have? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's um, there's so many rivalries, right, in this conference between, you know, this is another rivalry game, the Magnolia Trophy. Come on now. Come on now. Get, get me the first time, right? You're not going to get me a second time. But, um, yeah, there's just so many different rivalries, and, uh, you know, those two obviously have them. We saw uh, Marcus Spears had a, a bet a friendly bet with somebody I was uh, made aware of that so uh, you know it's just uh, you know there's such passion in college football and especially down here in the SEC I, I love watching that and so uh, it just makes sense to, to allow them to continue to have those kinds of uh, inside bets and I can play along for a few minutes. Hey Brian uh, you coached against Lane Kiffin obviously when he was at SC you were in Notre Dame it's been 10 years but yeah um, What's it like to coach against him? How much maybe has he changed from then to now? Well, he's a creative coach offensively, and they always have been cutting edge in terms of what they do. Um, yeah, and, and he's, uh, he's a guy that, that gets his team playing hard. I mean, they play hard. Offensively, there's always an answer to what you do in-game as well. But I think more importantly, uh, they scout you out. I mean, you better know your, your own self-scouting and where your tendencies are uh, because he's going to, to really dial in on if there's anything that you do, if you do anything defensively, he is going to analyze that uh, and have an answer for it. So you got to be very good at, at your self-scout. Hey, Coach, um, this past game you fall behind 7 nothing. You've got a third and long, and Daniels makes that deep throw to Booty. Are, are you a believer in a play like that when you make it early on? Does a lot for your confidence in terms of you know moving forward? If you don't make that play, maybe you don't have the success that you had? Yeah, look, I, we've been at this, you know, this had been the seventh game, and we've been confronted with those situations and haven't made them, but I don't think that there was any hesitation that we wouldn't go back to it because those, those two have been working hard in practice and trying to build that, you know, that relationship where, you know, we find you. And, and if you remember in that situation, he kind of found some green grass and um, he was going to be the primary on that play. And um, Jaden got flushed out of the pocket, but he kept his eyes looking for him. And it was really the first time when those two found each other, if you will, in terms of you know getting the ball. And, and then that drive, quite frankly, we had a lot of mistakes. Um, we made a lot of mistakes. That drive ended up in the end zone because of those two guys. They made big plays, and that's what sometimes you need is your big-time players have to step up. And I think that was the first time this year that – our best players stepped up to that level and, and made plays. Just after the film review, I guess that's kind of my question. Do you feel like that was a, a step up for the entire team offensively, or was it just the next step? Yeah, I think it's it's got to be part of what we continue to grow towards. Um, you know, there's going to be times where guys just got to step up and make plays, and and we we had been kind of grinding it out like. You know, every every we were we were trying to fight for every blade of grass, and sometimes you just got to make some plays. Um, and you know, the the big touchdown, you know, throw to Jare Jenkins. You know, they jump offside. You know, that's part of our offense. Take a shot down the field. You know, maybe early in the year we throw that out of bounds. You know, so just staying at it and being consistent with coaching it, and then telling our guys that look. Sooner or later, we got to step up and make these plays, and, and they did on Saturday. And now we've got to be consistent at it. You can't do it one week and then turn it off the next week and expect to win. Yeah, hey, Coach, right over here. Um, second top ten team you guys welcome here in, in two weeks. Just what, what lessons can you take away from maybe the last time you played a, a top ten team here and just whether it's in preparation, whether it's in focus, mentality, just what, what, what kind of lessons can you take away from that last one? Well, you know, each week this team is, is – is is learning so much and 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 growing um unfortunately they learned from the tennessee loss and and nobody really wants to be learning lessons after a loss but they learned a lot about 
intentionality and purpose in terms of their preparation. And, and we saw that during the week. Uh, and it carried over to the way they played on the road. I think then you win on the road in the fashion that they did. You build more confidence in your football team. So I think two weeks later, it's, um, I don't want to say a different team, but it's a team that has confidence. It's a team that knows that if they don't play clean, if they don't have an attention to detail, they'll have similar results that they did against Tennessee. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is that um, it's not a different team, but it's a team that has grown from the last couple of weeks. And, and if they take that knowledge into their preparation this week and into the game and their performance, um, then, then we should have one uh, really fine football team. Hey, Coach, over here to your left. Can you talk about you know, what you saw from the DB room this past weekend and just how much they pro progressed in SEC play? Um, you know, I thought, uh, you know, there were some good things, uh, things that we got to continue to work on. Obviously, um, you know, big plays, uh, we got to tackle better. I think it starts there. Um, you know, obviously we gave up a big play early on, uh, right out of the gates. We got to stay on top of the coverage there. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag right now. Uh, I'd like to stand up here and tell you that everything's great and, um, you know, we're ready to, you know, enshrine them all into the College Football Hall of Fame, but that's just not the case. I mean, it's work in progress, and, and we got to continue to get better at, at both, you know, the corner and safety and nickel position. Um, but I think it starts with the fundamentals, leverage, um, staying on top of the football, and tackling, quite frankly. This is, you know, I, I don't want to make it simple, but it's not that hard. Uh, we, we've got to get better in the fundamentals. If we get better in the fundamentals, we'll be better on the back end of our defense. Ryan, over here. Yes. Um, Will Campbell received SEC Offensive Lineman of the Thank Week. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, when was the last time you remember in your career playing two freshman offensive tackles on the line, and why don't true freshmen typically play in this position? I, I, I don't think I ever have. Um, but I'm having a hard time, you know, with last week in memory. So um, 32 years, 33 years. I don't believe I've ever started two freshmen, period, on an offensive line. But to have two tackles in the SEC is quite, quite unusual. Um, again, I, I think I talked about this last week. It's, it's not necessarily the physical. Although they, they have the physical, because you cannot play in this league unless you have physical traits. These guys are too fast. They're too big. They're too strong. They'll walk you back to the quarterback if you're not physically strong enough. And Emory Jones and Will Campbell physically have the traits to go in the weight room and be as strong as anybody that we have and are able to move their feet to, uh, to obviously get out and set these guys. Um, they're going to miss a couple, right? We got beat inside on a couple of um, times that uh, they countered moved us. But these guys are extraordinary in their ability to move on to the next play. Uh, they focus and then refocus. So their, their mental approach to the game is so far above any freshman that I'm used to having. Uh, they generally – you know, have that look in their eyes right about now that they're done. These guys are anxious for more, and that's unusual. Brian, that, that almost runs that kind of Baylor offensive scheme, you know, the old Baylor. Uh, yeah, it's very – yeah, there's a lot of similarities. I guess what does – because they have so much success in the run game, what does that kind of scheme do that makes stopping the run so difficult? Well, it's, it's perimeter-based. The ball is trying to get out on the perimeter, but you now have a quarterback that if you're spreading yourself thin on the perimeter, he strikes down the heart of your defense. So, you know, it's, it's – and, and then they, they've got a great play-action game, and Mingo's six foot three, six four, two 225 pounds. He's a matchup nightmare. So, you know, when, you, when your safeties are dropping down, you're trying to load the box, you're trying to, you know, defend the perimeter, now they've got one-on-one -on -one matchups that they can throw the football. So, you know, Auburn was trying to stop, you know, the passing game, and then they were a little soft to the run game. They run for 400 yards. You cannot win games giving up 400 yards rushing. So, well, you can, but you, you're playing the game – you know, up and down the field. Um, so it's just a, it's an offense that has been set up, you know, obviously to, um, you know, force the ball outside, but 
they have a quarterback now that can run it so effectively as well. They they threw the ball last year because they had a great quarterback in Corral. This is a different quarterback, and so th that's what Lane does well. He he's going to set his offense based upon who the player is. It's not about plays. It's about players for him, and he changes based upon who he has. And he's got a quarterback that is is a real dual threat. Uh, coach. You, um, the Ole Miss's running game has gotten a lot of the credit this year. Obviously, ran over 400 yards last week. But what have you seen out of Jackson Dart in that passing game for what you've seen so far? Well, he's a pure, you know, I mean, it, it's, if he was in a different, and I've played against him, you know, in, in a pure passing um, spread offense. He's a, I mean, he's a beautiful thrower of the football. I mean, you know, he is you know, California, you know, throw the football. I mean, he has all those traits. Um, but he's also athletic enough and, and can run uh, that, that they've put him now in a system where he becomes a dual threat. So, um, you know, we've, we've played Hooker. Um, we've played Richardson. Uh, we're going to play Jefferson. These are big body, thick, physical quarterbacks, right, that, that are not, you know, Look, they're all really good quarterbacks that can throw, but they don't throw like this kid. Um, this kid has the ability to, to drop back, you know, 50 times if they wanted to and, and throw the football. Hey, Coach, um, about Josh Williams, he's just an incredible story, a former yeah. walk-on, and in a performance where Jaden Daniels had six touchdowns, he had six straight offensive touchdowns on the first six possessions. Why was it important to give the game ball to Josh Williams for his play? On yeah, so, so the theme all week was attention to detail. And, and so his attention to the smallest of details in that game helped us win. And I wanted to make sure that that kind of was followed up, you know, with, with the game ball. Um, you know, we asked our back to chip a lot, you know, off those defensive ends to help those young tackles that we just talked about. And, you know, he's not six foot two. I mean, so when you talk about him having the chip, he's got to leave his feet to chip. Um, but he was outstanding at it. He stopped the charge uh, of defensive ends, um, caught the ball coming out of the backfield, uh, picked up blitzers, actually picked up the defensive end by himself a couple of times when we missed the slide, um, ran the ball coming out in the third quarter with authority that gave us great momentum. Um, just a little bit of everything. All, all the little jobs that you ask him to do, uh, he does them. And, um, and sometimes he does them for the first time. That's a, over 100 yards for the first time for him. Um, so we wanted to reward him uh, in kind. Uh, Brian, just real quick, uh, Jack Besh and Armani Goodwin, what's their status this week? Um, Jack is, um, he's day to day. You know, he's got the same back. Uh, situation, which is an L, L5, um, you know, it's it's cranky. Hopefully we can get him up and going. He's a tough guy. Um, hopefully we can get him loose enough where he can play. Uh, and Armani, we're going to practice him on Tuesday and see what we can get. Uh, he wants to play, um, and uh, our doctors have cleared him. Uh, we'll see what kind of volume we can get out of him, and, and hopefully it, uh, it goes well during the week. And then when you talk about just like the chunk plays on defense and giving those up, how do you go about cleaning that up? Is it as simple as tackling? Like well, you, you said? saw it, right? I mean, we tried to punch the ball loose twice on, on Richardson. You got to tackle him. I mean, that's a commitment. You got to go and wrap him up and bring him down on the ground. And, you know, so that was tackling. We gave up the big play pass where we just need to stay on top, you know, and, you know, we did not. Um, you know, we gave up run after the catch and, and, uh, Again, that was a tackling situation. So we just have to be better at tackling. I think if we start there um, and really focus on just doing our job, we're going to be much better at the defensive end. Um, I guess I haven't watched in detail every game of, of how you've been on the sidelines, but it looked like you kind of had like a little cheat sheet or a uh, note set with you uh, when you were going through the game. I just was wondering kind of what went into that. Situational football, mostly situational calls. Uh, just you know, Mike called a great game. I thought. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just looking at situational calls, um, and and just reminding um, you know uh, the quarterback, um, talking to Mike, uh, talking to Matt, 
uh, mostly on situational calls. Coach, down here, a couple of things. Do you mention to the team at all potentially tying for the West lead this week? And also, the Brian Thomas catch that was overturned. Have you gotten a sufficient explanation for that? Um, no, we won't talk about tying for the West. I think it's too early to talk in terms of that. I think there's just too much football left to be played. What we're going to talk about is, is how we play better um, at home in front of our fans uh, against the top 10 team. I mean, our focus will be on ourselves um, more so than what that means. Then we get a week off to kind of assess, you know, and then, and then we'll kind of put uh, the, the next four weeks kind of in perspective and maybe we'll start to talk about it from that, from that sense. I have not. Um, you know, there, there were some things that happened in that game that just, you know, my, my biggest concern is that we're just slowing the game down. You know, we're already, look, we got to pay the bills. I get it. Um, you know, it's 4-3, four, 4-3 three, four, three with timeouts. That's, that's not going away. Or, or we're going to be, you know, obviously not paying uh, anybody uh, anything. So, um, but to, to stop the game for so many reviews and, and um, most of them to be the, the play stands as called, um, it just takes away the flow of the game. And uh, hopefully it's something that we can look at at the end of the season. Maybe it can be instant replay on, on scoring plays only or change of possession. And then if you feel like that it's egregious, throw your red flag out there. Um, but it just seems like we're slowing the game down. But uh, that, that'll be a topic that we can have after the, uh, the season ends. Hey, Brian. This is a little layered, but... Can you explain how you all go through the play call operation? Does Mike have complete autonomy? How involved are you? And were you more involved Saturday than you had been prior? Mike calls all the good plays. And I call all the great plays. Um, so it, it comes down from, from, from Mike um, at, and Cortez. Uh, obviously, he's got him on the sideline. but. Um, they're going through our signalers, so I'm hearing them, um, and and I'm just making look. It, there's a there's there's a couple of voices. One, you know, obviously is is enough. You can't have three or four voices when, you know, you're getting the play and you're getting into a flow. The one thing, and I've been a play caller. You, you can't get a million suggestions going. You've got to let a play caller go. And, and for me, um, I'm reminding him on whether we're going for it on fourth down and what we need to go for it on fourth down, how many yards. Hey, we're going for it on fourth and three here. So you can run it twice. I'll give him suggestions like that during the series. Um, and, and other than that, kind of allow him to keep in the flow of the game. Um, I'm reminding him of time and timeouts and, and really time management issues uh, more than anything else. Other than that, play calling is it's an art and a science, but, but you, can't, you can't get in the way of the art of it. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you a couple about your specialists there. Ramos, I know he's only tried six field goals all year, but that seemed to be a pretty big kick for him. You know, no moving doubt. forward, a pressure pack spot. And then Bramlin, I see, is averaging almost 46 yards per punt. So if you could maybe just your thoughts on those two guys. Yeah, I think that's – thanks for asking the question. I, Damian Ramos, let's put him in that situation, right? I mean, it's loud. Um, that's a big kick, right? That ices the game. And uh, he nails it. Um, snap was great. The hold was great. The execution was – we've seen, you know, that has to happen too, right? We just could go back to the first week. Um so the execution was great, the kick was great, but he has been consistent since we put him in in camp. We've tried to simulate those the best we can with loud music, and he has been he's been spot on. So we felt really confident in that situation. Um, and and Bramlett, as you saw, we made a a, a bit of a, a change where we directionally kicked a little bit, um, and and he was outstanding. You know, we were we we're. We were pushing that ball closer to the sideline um, to squeeze our coverage teams into a better location. He's capable of kicking at 50-plus every time. We don't want to stretch out our coverage teams quite as much. So um, directionally, he was outstanding. 
Uh, just two quick ones. Does it feel like this season has flown by to you? And then secondly, facing another fellow analytic-minded coach, do you have to prepare your defense any differently to expect maybe, not necessarily the unexpected, but to be on the field longer? Yes. Uh, yeah, we look at all those numbers, and, and you know, there's some similarities there in terms of making sure our guys understand they're going to be on the field for most of the fourth down situations that are going to be occurring. Um, so we've already had that meeting with the coordinators. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So when, when you're enjoying what you're doing, you know, it doesn't seem like it's, you know, oh my God, it's, we're, it's October. I mean, you know, it just feels like this is, uh, you know, this is what I wanted to do and, and uh, it's, it's flying by. Hey, Coach, uh, right here. Uh, with Ole Miss's defense, what are some notable strengths that they have and what are some things that you guys are going to have to look out for when it comes to that unit? Well, it's it's hard to know exactly where the, the, the birds line up all the time. It's it's three down. It's three, 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 four. It's They're playing with a nickel and dime. They're playing some invert. You don't know where some of the pressures. They're striking from the field. They're striking from the boundary. Uh, so you've got to be on your toes. You know, this is a week where recognition um, and understanding where it's coming from is going to be really important. So um, quarterback's going to be ha is going to have to be on it. He's going to have to slide the right way. Our back's going to have to uh, go coast to coast in some of their read progressions. Um, it just there's got to be a better attention, you know, in that regard. Where in sometimes when you're in four down, you know where the overload blitz is coming from, you know, from four down situations because you got to tip it. Um, so you got to lock in on safeties. You know, you, you got to look for the tells. This just is a week where you got to really do a, a, a really good job against them. Good. All right. Thank you.